All right. Good morning, Asbury. Good morning. Good morning. As you can tell by my voice, I'm about 95% better this week. Uh, I do not sound like I am dying of the flu. Uh, so I want to take just a moment to welcome any first-time guests that are here with us this morning and say that we're very excited to have you with us. Uh, we'd love the opportunity to connect with you, and we do have one or two ways you can do that. Option one is you can pull out a connection card, which you can find in the seat back pocket in front of you. Unless you are in the front row, then you can reach behind you to the seat back pocket behind you. Uh, if you do this, fill it out and drop it in an offering plate during offertory. Uh, or if you're a little more tech savvy or save the tree type, you can text the word welcome to 281-305-1069. After you send that text message, you'll receive a follow-up message to fill out a quick connection card virtually online. Uh, but don't worry, we won't sell your information to anybody, and we won't, you know, send you spam texts. Uh, also, if you're a first-time visitor, go ahead and stop by that welcome desk uh, that's right out front in the lobby on your way out of worship this morning, so we can give you a small gift as a way of saying thanks for being here. Once again, my name is Alec. If you need someone to talk to after worship, I am right back there in the media booth. But without further ado, let's get ready to worship. Well, good morning and welcome to worship at Asbury. Uh, today is the first Sunday of the month, which means that we have uh, the... Uh, the opportunity to take communion together, but it's also when we invite our kiddos to come up and help lead worship. And this is one that they are familiar with from Sunday school and from our worship. My God is so big. So if y'all will start making your way up to the front here. And as they're doing that, if you will stand with us as we're going to sing together. Y'all come on up. I believe there's hand motions that y'all know really well to this one. Here we go, my God is so big. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. Before you head back to your seats, we're going to invite Miss Jay Lynn down, and you guys can join her here up front for a very special children's time.
not that this is Sheila's, but we'll get there. Hey, there we go. Good morning, everyone. Um, a couple things before we start that I want to touch on. All these lovely Christmas decorations are going away because today is Epiphany, like the official end of Christmas for us, which is just a bummer. For me. I love Christmas. So I encourage you after the service, though, to read some of these paper chains before they're gone. People have been sharing over the course of December um, how they experience the presence of God, and they are powerful and beautiful, and I don't want you to miss out. So go ahead and take some time after the service, our young here and our young at heart there, to read over some of these. You just don't want to miss them. Um, and then the second thing is that the scripture Pastor Lindsay is sharing us uh, sharing with us today is chock full overflowing of great information on how to live life and why God does the things that he does and what I'm going to share with you is this tiny tiny little sliver and even Pastor Lindsay in the time she has is kind of only touch on a slice of it so I really encourage you if you have daily prayer time or daily scripture time if you would take like two verses per day of this passage and really spend some time on it, I think God will have some amazing messages for you as we start a new year. All right? <laughs> okay, guys. So let's go ahead and jump right in. I want to ask you a question. How many of you here love having a birthday party? I do. Uh, I still do. Um, I think everybody should enjoy birthdays. They're fabulous. And when I was a kid, and I think it's true for y'all too, one of the best places to have a birthday is Chuck E. Cheese. How many of you love going to Chuck E. Cheese, right? They've got games. They've got cake. They've got prizes. They've got ices. Yes, there is nothing not to like at Chuck E. Cheese. And if you're going to have a birthday party, and it's going to be the best Chuck E. Cheese birthday ever, you probably have at least one person that you want to have at that party, right? Does everybody have that one person that just absolutely has to come to their party? Chucky. <laughs> Chucky is one. And you probably also have a friend, right? you got somebody that you want at that party no matter what, right? Who do you want at your party? Jesus, I tell you, we are on the ball today, guys. Um, and if you invite your very best friend to your birthday party at Chuck E. Cheese, do you want them to sit out in the parking lot? Do you want them to come inside but sit at another table? No. If you have your best friend with you at your birthday party, you want them to be sitting right next to you. You want them to enjoy the cake. You want to talk to them about the cool presents you're opening. You want to go play games with them. You want them to experience the party with you because you're, they're, they're your very best friend. Yes, sweetheart. I'm going to have a mermaid party. Ooh, boy. I like mermaids. Yes. Now, is she going to sit outside your house or be inside with you having a party? My party's going to be at Chuck E. Oh, well, see, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, wait, we got one right behind you. Hold on. Yes, sweetheart. I'm going to have a Chuck E. Meow. Yes. Wow, that's exciting. Which one are your sisters? Okay, great. Well, let's say happy birthday. Ready? One, two, three. Happy, happy birthday! birthday happy. Yes. I have no idea what birthday I'm going to have next year. Well, we've got some time to come up with some ideas then. All right, everybody start working on ideas for Logan's birthday. Yes, I think he's not as interested in a merman mermaid party, but a dance party would be cool. Exactly. You want to spend this kind of time with your best friend. You want them to enjoy it with you. So let me jump into our scripture, and then you'll see why I'm talking about birthday parties. Are we ready? Here we go. Okay. 
All of these great things that are in the previous verses are from God who reconciled or made us right to himself through Christ and who gave us the ministry of reconciliation, making others right through Christ. In other words, God was reconciling the word, the world, which is all of us in it, to himself through Christ by not counting people's sins against them. He has trusted us with this message of reconciliation. So what I want you to hear is that we were all together best friends in the Garden of Eden, right? And then because we're human and we're people, we made a uh, mistake. We sinned. And that sin caused separation between us and God. And ever since the Garden of Eden, he has been trying to find ways to bring us closer and closer and closer back to him. And at Christmas time, we celebrated that Jesus came and was actually with us. And then in a few weeks' time, we'll celebrate, well, several months, we'll celebrate Pentecost. And at Pentecost, that's when we got the second part of the Trinity. So first we got Jesus, who came and was with us. And then the second part of the Trinity is what we got at Pentecost. Does anybody know what gift was given to us at Pentecost? Go for it. Yes, Logan. We got the church. And it was the birthday of the church because Why? Holy Spirit, the second part of the Trinity, came to live in us. And one day, sometime far away, we don't know when, the world will be all heaven and we'll be with God and that will be the third part of the Trinity. It'll be complete in just a minute and I'll hear it. So let's go ahead and go to God in prayer about the fact that we get to be best friends with him, sitting at his birthday table, enjoying life with him. All right? Dear God, we come to you, and we are so thankful for this ministry of reconciliation. You, Even though um, our consequences for our sin was to be separate of you, who was super holy, that was not good enough for you. You love us too much, and you want to be best friends with us too badly to let that be the case. We thank you that through Christ, you are getting closer and closer to us every day. We also thank you that you have entrusted us to tell others the good news of Jesus and the ministry of reconciliation. Help us to open our ears and our hearts to hear how we can learn to love you more and more all the time. Amen. Well, good morning. Good morning. It's good to be in worship with you today. I'm Lindsay. I'm the pastor here, and I'm glad that uh, we get to worship together. I was out of town last week, so it feels good to be back together. Um, why don't you go ahead and stand, and I'm going to give you like five seconds to greet your neighbors around you and tell them welcome to worship today. Let's go ahead and get back to our seats. All right, well, it's a new year, and uh, I'm excited about who knows what God's going to do in the coming year. I'm, I'm always excited to see where God takes us, and, uh, you know, if the Texans can make it into the playoffs, then anything is possible, so uh, it's already a good start. Um, <laughs> So let's go ahead, and I want to share a few folks that I'd like for you to be praying for this week. Um, Kristen McKee um, is uh, Kay Shavit's daughter, and she is undergoing um, uh, treatment for her brain cancer. So will you please keep Kristen in your prayers? Also, uh, the Kramers have asked for prayers for their daughter, Ivy, who's undergoing some medical tests. We're praying for Marty and his recovery from his surgery last week. If you receive our uh, weekly church emails, then you probably know that we received a um, kind of a Christmas present as a congregation. Um, and what happened was that a small United Methodist uh, church in the north side of Pasadena closed its doors um, over the last week or two, and they decided to give their property to Asbury. And so we now have property um, up in the Deepwater neighborhood. Um, and we are really excited to see what kind of ministry we can be doing there. Um, and so if you will be joining us in prayer uh, as 
we have this season of discernment. Um, and, you know, ooh, new year, new glitch. I like it. Um, so, uh, you know, it, we're, we're going to have a few months to figure out if this is the right thing for us or if we need to pass the property along to someone else. Um, but in the meantime, we know that there's a, a lot of folks in, in need in that community, and we want to see if we can find something to do there. So just be keeping that in your prayers, too. Uh, let's go ahead and bow our heads and our hearts as we go to the Lord in prayer today. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this space, this time to quiet our hearts before you. We pray that as we look ahead, um, we know that there's all kinds of things that will happen this year that, that we don't know are coming. We don't know um, what's going to happen in our own family. We don't know what our health journeys will look like. We don't know what the political landscape will be. The last few years have taught us that anything could happen, right? And so whenever we're in that like place of uh, where everything feels foggy, what we do know becomes even more important. And here's really the only thing we do know, and that is this. Our God is good, and you're with us, and you're walking through all of it with us. God, you, we know you're working for our good. Scripture tells us that. We know that you're with us, within us, through the Holy Spirit. And so we might not know what's coming, but we know who's going to be with us through it. And we pray, Lord, that you get our hearts to a place where that's enough. That's enough. God, today we are grateful because we're kind of focusing in on the fact that you offer us fresh start every day, um, that you offer that we can not be bound by the things that we've done or been or have happened in the past, but that we can be a new creation in you and that you're the kind of God that makes that possible and that cares about that. And so, and so today we just want to be grateful for who you choose to be. Uh, we're going to take communion later, and Scripture tells us to take that seriously. So we want to take a moment, and if there's anything that we need to confess before you, God, particularly if there's any unforgiveness in our heart, then we know we got to deal with that. Um, so we're going to take a moment of silence and lift those things up to you. For anything that separates us from you, Lord, please forgive us. Thank you for your grace. Help us to feel truly forgiven, to know that you have made a way for us to belong at your table just like everybody else. We pray, Lord, um, that as we go into this week, into this year, that we would go centered in your peace that surpasses all understanding, knowing that you are God, you are with us, and you are working for our good. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. All right, so now is the time in our service where we give our offerings to God. We do that not because the church needs it, but because we need a way to say thank you to the Lord for everything he's done for us. Um, if you receive those church emails, then you probably saw this week that we ended the year um, like really pretty strong financially, and we're really grateful for that huge blessing. It gives us a, a good springboard into the new year. In fact, we're so happy about it that we got some cupcakes, and they're going to be out in the main hall, and you can grab one on your way out the door and uh, get that sweet tooth taken care of. But we're just really happy um, that God is providing for ministry here um, beyond what we ever knew would happen. And so every time you give here, you're a part of that, and I want to say thank you. And when the music begins, there's offering plates by the back doors. You can stand in place a gift in one of those, or we have like a bajillion ways to give online through asbury.cc, our website, or your bank, or text message, or whatever. Again, thanks so much for your partnership in ministry.
God, as you know, today is the day of Epiphany. Historically, it's the day that the church uh, remembers the wise men and their arrival and the realization that the person of God could be found in Jesus Christ. We pray that when we encounter scripture today, that you would bring an epiphany to us, to a realization, something that we hadn't seen before, something we didn't know before, an encounter with you, Lord. So this time is yours. Uh, we give it to you, God. We pray, speak to us once again. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all take a seat. There, uh, there was a girl that I didn't like very much. She, uh, she seemed to kind of like establish an in-group, and it felt like high school all over again, you know, which I just wasn't really interested in. She was friends with some people. Some of them I didn't like very much either. If I'm honest, I was probably a little bit jealous of her um, because she seemed to be at the center of things at the time and knew like everybody and I felt at the time I was feeling a little on the outside myself so I'll just say that towards this particular person I felt absolutely no warm fuzzies at all and then there was this other girl and I was really good friends with her uh, she was trying to decide if she should become a pastor at the time when I was serving at her church and so like I encouraged her to go to seminary and she did and uh, we have been friends ever since. She's in ministry now. She's preached here once before years ago. I trust her judgment. I trust her character. I knew that we would be lifelong friends and colleagues. When she finally got ordained, because it takes forever in the United Methodist Church, she was allowed, just like everybody else, you get two people uh, who can lay hands on you while you're being ordained. And guess who she picked? She picked me, which was awesome. And and then she picked the first girl. So I am there, and like, sure, it's about Brandy and everything, but I'm thinking and rolling my eyes internally thinking, great, I've got to be around her now, right? Because like, it's about me. But uh, my friend, uh, she ended up having one of the more eventful ordinations that I've ever heard of because uh, she is a clergy couple. Her husband is also a pastor, and he got food poisoning and was feeling very sick. And whenever he, the ordination service w was going and like it was about time for them to go forward, he, like, he falls over, he faints. And so um, they have to call EMS into the worship service and he's being rolled out on a gurney. They get ordained by the bishop while on a gurney out in the hallway. And he literally has a, a readout of his heart rate while he's being ordained because they have all this stuff going all over him and stuff. So it was like this crazy, I just imagine if you're an EMS dude and you've like maybe never been to church before and this is what your night looks like, you're like, what did I just walk into? Like, what is this, right? Anyway, that was her ordination. And um, afterwards, uh, I decided that I wanted to start a group uh, to bring people together in the church, especially folks who disagreed. Um, I thought that there, if there's one place where people should be able to disagree and love each other, it should be in church, and especially around some of the more hot topic issues in the church like sexuality. And so this was years before church splits were happening over it. I told my friend about this, that I wanted to get this started. I invited her to join, and she said, yeah, sure, I'll do it. But who you really need is, you guess it? Yeah, that other girl. And I trusted my friend, so I met this other girl over at Gringo's off of 45, and we were like puppies. We were like sniffing each other out, like, you know, like, I don't know about you, and cautiously like trying out different topics of conversation to see what kind of answers we would give, getting a sense of each other. And I decided after that lunch that I was going to give this girl a shot. Maybe I had been wrong about her, right? Fast forward. She's not my best friend, um, and, and her friendship is very important to me, and I trust her completely, and she trusts me, and together the two of us did end up building something that was amazing and we couldn't have anticipated. I will always be grateful for my other friend, first for her friendship, which again means a lot, but also because she was embodying an aspect of the character of God in my life, the personality, the nature of God. She was being a reconciler. She was being a peacemaker. There were two of us. We were estranged. We were kind of suspicious of each other. And she became the bridge 
the one who brought harmony between us. Well, it's a new year. It's 2024. It's kind of hard to believe. Kids in church. I, so like kids of all generations have always believed that it's hard for their parents to understand them. They can't possibly understand what life is like because it was so long ago that their own parents were kids. The thing is for y'all, it's actually true. Okay, with my own kids. Um, I'm not from a different century. I'm from a different millennia, okay? When I was a kid, phones only made phone calls. That's all they did. There were commercials that interrupted your TV show, and you had to run like a mad person to the bathroom and back, hoping that you didn't miss whatever Price is Right or whatever was on the television, ER. You had to hurry, right? Like there was no mama pausing the TV for you, right? If you got home late from the doctor and you missed Ninja Turtles, you were just out of luck for an entire day. There was no internet. There was something called MS-DOS. I don't know if anybody else remembers that. I do. Station wagons had swivel seats in the trunks. Like, that was safe. We made it. I mean, like, we're still alive. But, like, there was no buckies, people. You had to just go into a random gas station and pray it had been cleaned in the last year. Life was different back then. And the fact that it's 2024 and I can still function in everyday society is, frankly, kind of shocking. And, um, ha like, I'm happy about that, right? So here we are, it's a new year, and at new year, people tend to think a little inwardly, I'm not saying selfishly, we tend to do a little self-reflection about how we're doing and who we are and who we want to be and where we want to go and how we're going to get there, and that's good and healthy, it's a great practice. Self-reflection is actually a little rare, and it's a wonderful quality to have, but while we're in that kind of headspace, I think in our daily life, I wanted to take that energy, that idea and then just like tweak it a little bit. And, and instead of taking an inward focus on ourselves, take an inward focus on God and who God is. And so for the next few weeks, that's what we're going to do. We're going to take a deep dive on who God is. What is God's character? Who, what is his nature? And we could honestly spend a whole year on that because the more we learn about God, the, the more we realize there is to learn. But for the next few weeks, we're going to talk about who this God is that we worship and serve and love. And there are some obvious answers. God is creator, right? God is savior. God is the divine presence in our lives. And all those things are absolutely 100% true. But we're going to focus on some of the less obvious things um, about who God is. And so today, I want to lay that foundation about who our God is by talking about our God, the peacemaker our God, the reconciler, because that might not be the foundational way that most people see God, but it actually, it's the foundational way that I see God, and I wanted to, to share that as one of the metaphors we have about God in scripture, and in order to do that, we're going to actually have to turn to one of my very favorite passages, so go ahead and grab a blue Bible from a chair in front of you, um, or you can pull it up on your device. If you don't have a Bible app, we encourage the um, YouVersion Bible, but any Bible is good. It doesn't matter what translation you use. We'll be using the CEB version, but again, whatever you want. Uh, we're going to be in 2 Corinthians. That's after 1 Corinthians. It's in the New Testament. Look it up in the table of contents if you need it. Chapter 5, beginning in verse 14. Uh, this was written by the Apostle Paul. He's going around the Mediterranean planting churches. He's speaking to the church in Corinth, which is his probably his favorite church, the one he spent the most time in. He's very close to them. We're starting in verse 14. The love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this. One died for the sake of all, and therefore all died. What he means is we died to ourselves. He died for the sake of all so that those who are alive should live not for themselves, but for the one who died for them and was raised. So then, from this point on, we won't recognize people by human standards, we won't look at people the way we look at them. We'll try to look at them the way God looks at them. Even though we used to know Christ by human standards, that's not how we know him now. So then, if anyone is in Christ, that person is a new creation. The old things have gone away, and look, new things have arrived. All of these new things are from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. In other words, God was reconciling the world to himself through Christ by not counting people's sins against them. 
He has trusted us with this message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors who represent Christ. God is negotiating with you through us. We're begging you as Christ's representatives, be reconciled to God. And then this just blows my mind. God caused the one who didn't know sin to be sin for our sake so that through him we could become the righteousness of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Together we can say, thanks be to God. Okay, so the father used Jesus, the son, to reconcile the whole world to himself. He was making peace. And making peace is 100% different than keeping peace. I'm sure you already know this, but a peacekeeper is the family, like the referee, you know, the one who goes and like nobody wants to talk to that person. So they go and talk to that person so that other people don't go and talk to them. And there's a yelling match, right? You're just keeping the peace. It's a fragile peace. A peacekeeper is not improving anything. Nothing's going to get better. You're just trying to make it not worse, right? You're maintaining the status quo. You're keeping a peace that is fragilely in effect. God is not a peacekeeper. God is a peacemaker. I'm over here. That other girl was over there, and our mutual friend stood in the gap and said, y'all really need to get together, right? She created a relationship where there wasn't one before. The prodigal and the family has burned too many bridges, and nobody's really interested in having them come back around again, but you think it's time to bring them back into the fold, and so you go out on a limb. You sit everybody down. You try to facilitate a reunion. These two entities at work cannot, will not get along, and you bring them to the table together, and you put a little personal stake in there, and you help them build trust so that they can work together again. Being a peace maker requires way more effort, way more putting yourself vulnerability, okay, than just being a peacekeeper where you're trying to tamp everything down. And every relationship on earth goes through brokenness. You know this. You let them down at some point. They let you down. They maybe haven't been there for you the way that they should have been. Maybe you cheated. Maybe there's lying or betrayal or sniping at one another from time to time. I don't know how to describe it to you. Maybe you hang up on the phone with them or something. You have experienced for yourself that in every relationship, even the best ones, some brokenness gets experienced along the way. Somebody loses their temper and says something. And that is also true in our relationship with God. At some point along the way, the relationship experiences some break. We fail God somehow. We don't trust him. We ignore him. We rebel. We don't confide in him, whatever. That's mixed into our relationship with God. Along the way, there's cracks, some distance. Now, the church word for that is what? Sin, right? Sin is anything that creates distance between ourselves And God, because God made us for closeness, and so anything in our life that kind of pushes God away, that's what we call sin. He he didn't create us for that. He created us for love, for shalom. Now, shalom is a Hebrew word, and there's not really a perfect translation for it in English because it means a lot, but the best, easiest definition I can give you is that shalom means what? Peace. More specifically, it means perfect harmony, actually. In the book of Judges, God calls Gideon to be a warrior judge for Israel, and they're talking that out, and Gideon's freaked out, and God's trying to calm him down, and God says to him, peace, do not be afraid, you are not going to (laughs) die. So Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it what? The Lord is peace. So like one of the names for God that you can call on is the Lord is peace. Then, uh, in one of the most famous passages in the Old Testament, this is like the blessing that people tend to give um, from the Bible. The Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you or his face towards you and give you what? Peace. The blessing that we are given in Scripture is a blessing of peace, a blessing of shalom, of perfect harmony to be present in our lives. Then in the Gospels, like the night before Jesus dies, he's talking to his friends and he says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. My perfect harmony 
with the Lord in all things in your life. My perfect peace I give you. Now, one of the most important things, like Jesus only has a couple hours left with his folks, and this is what he tells them. Jesus is the one who gives us perfect peace. There's no peacekeeping between ourselves and God. God's not tiptoeing around us, wondering if he's going to make us anxious, trying to maintain some lame status quo that isn't anything close to the full, expansive relationship he made us for. When we find ourselves distanced from God, it's because there's been a break, right? The peace has been broken. There's no peace to keep. The perfect harmony God made us for is no more. So there had to be a peacemaker, a reconciler, in Paul's words, a harmony restorer, someone to bridge the brokenness. Now, the source of that brokenness is our sin, right? And so in some mystical way that I can't really begin to understand, but I believe in, just like I believe that there's grace present when we take communion, Paul tells us Jesus became sin, like, I don't understand how that happens, but what we're being told in Scripture is that his body actually takes on, every, like, he becomes sin itself, okay? And so, did Jesus die on the cross? Yes, absolutely. And that is an incredible sacrificial love that Jesus showed for us on the cross. Jesus wasn't the only one that died on the cross. Sin died on the cross. Because he became sin and he killed sin. Do you see that? He killed the power of sin. The power of sin over your life. It died. And it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what you've done or who you've been or who you've hurt along the way. Any of it. Your messed up priorities or mistakes or addictions or fears or whatever that created the distance. And I, and I really want to say this clearly too because um, there's been a lot of harm done over the years about this. There might be things about you, not things you've done, but who you are, that because of who you are, you feel like God doesn't want you, that you're not good enough for God or whatever. Now, since God made you to be who you are, that's not actually the case, but sometimes people tell us lies about ourselves and we believe them. And so we distance ourselves from God because we think God wants distance from us, okay? Whether it's something you did or something about who you are, whatever that created the distance, no matter what it was, Jesus already created the bridge. Nothing on earth that you've done or who you are or anything can shake it. The peace is already made, right? Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. All we have to do once the bridge is laid is walk over it, right? Now, I know you've experienced brokenness in your relationships. We can't help it. It happens to all of us. And when that has happened, there's always a choice that gets made. And the choice is this. Am I going to be the one to try to fix it? Right? Or this time, am I finally going to make them be the one to do the hard work and to make it right? And sometimes we choose one thing and sometimes we choose another. And sometimes we say it's time to let that relationship go. And what I want to tell you today, that's fine, you know, but that is never a choice that God has ever made about you or about anyone. Our God is the God who always extends the olive branch. He always goes out on a limb to restore harmony and to reconcile every single time. I hope that you've had a time in your life where you were able to make peace with God where it's just you and him, and you surrender to his grace. You know you weren't worthy of it, but you accept it anyway. And you felt that feeling of being made right with the Lord. If you haven't had that experience, we'll pray about that in a little bit. Maybe you can ask for that today. I was 14, uh, and I had been raised in church, so I knew all the things. But my constant doubting about this whole God thing just um, was constant. It was every day. I was worried about it. And I wasn't sure if I even believed in God. And I remember, okay, but if I say I'm going to trust, I felt like I was hanging over a cliff, right? And when I took that step, I discovered that there was actually a solid foundation over there. It was just invisible to me, a bridge I didn't know was there. And I was filled with so much joy because God has found his way to me and I had found my way to him. And once I found that way, I knew it was the path I'd be on the rest of my life. Today, we're celebrating the kind of God we have, not like, 
oh, here's what you have to do. Just like God is really good and he cares enough about you that he found a way to be with us forever. And the one who will always make the effort to restore the peace between us. You can have harmony with God. As Paul shows us in this passage, um, God's the one doing that. He, he offers us the opportunity too, though. He says he's given us a ministry of reconciliation. So we are to become the peacemakers. If we're made in the image of God and part of God's image is to be a peacemaker, then we have to reflect that image, right? And so God calls us to be the person who is willing to go out on a limb and make peace. So part of what I want to ask you this morning is, is there anybody in the, your life that you're supposed to be making peace with, that God has called you to make peace with? Um, there's a really good book on this topic. It's called The Peacemaker, A Biblical Guide to Resolving Personal Conflict, if you want to look into that on your own. But in case there is someone that you feel like God is calling you to make peace with, well, all I want to tell you for today is that you need to dress for the part, okay? You need to dress for the part. And Colossians 3 tells us what to wear. Therefore, as God's choice, holy and loved, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Be tolerant with each other. And if someone has a complaint against anybody, forgive each other. As the Lord forgave you, so also forgive each other. And over all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. And the what? The peace. The peace of Christ must control your hearts. Not your anger, not your hurt, not your bitterness. The peace of Christ must control your hearts. A peace into which you are called in one body. Paul's telling us there's eight pieces of clothing we got to put on, right? Compassion kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, tolerance, forgiveness, and love. And so think about the thing that you want to say to that person. And then ask yourself, is it kind? Is it humble? Is it gentle? Is it tolerant? Does it show forgiveness? Is it loving? Is it patient? Right? If it is, check the box. You know exactly what to do. If not, like, delete that email you made when you were mad and come up with a new draft, right? Yeah, we know what to do. I think many of us have a view of God that God is the judge. And he's standing over us and he's pointing. And that the main dynamic in our relationship is that we messed up and we got to figure out how to make it right. And here's the consequences in your punishment. And, like, there's an element of that, I guess. It's in Scripture, Right? So I accept that as biblical. I just look at this passage from Paul, and I see him more as the person who stands in the gap, right? who blazes a trail between the two that were broken, who lays himself down as the bridge. So this week, if there's any distance between yourself and God, I hope you will ask God to help you feel the peace that he's made available to you. Okay? When you start to feel anxious, remember that peace. And if God has called you to act out being a peacemaker this week, then just remember to dress for the part. Read Colossians 3 again. Carry that same compassion and tolerance and forgiveness that God has for you to them. And today, let's just rest in the knowledge that our God is really good, and he is a reconciler, and he is wanting and eager and willing to make peace with you. Let's pray together. God, uh, we could each tell our own story, I think, um, of being created by you and loved by you and then the things that happen along the way. If we have had an experience of being made right with the Lord, then thank you for that, God. Thank you for your faithfulness and grace to bring us to that point and remind us what that felt like. And if we have never made peace with you, God, then today, remind us of all the things that we think are the reasons we can't have peace with you. And then help us to just push them away. To remember that you have already taken them away. For our own part in it, you've already killed it on the cross. The peace is made. It's done. 
we just have to, like you're standing at the door and we just have to knock. So give us the courage to knock, to say, God, we want that harmony with you. We want to be made right with the one who made us. We want that soul health and wholeness. Yeah. God, if there is a person that you want us to make peace with, then draw that person's face to our mind. Give us the energy, uh, the perseverance, and the courage to make peace so that maybe they can see you in us. We thank you for your goodness toward us, Lord. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, we take communion once a month here. It's usually the first Sunday of the month. Um, and taking communion just means taking a little piece of bread and a little cup of juice and, and eating and drinking them. We do that because on the night he gave himself up for us, Jesus told us to. He said that the bread was like his body and the, the juice was like his blood and that when we take it, we remember that he sacrificed himself, that he loved us that much, um, that we have a place at his table. When the ushers uh, guide you, then you can come forward and take a piece of bread, take the drink. The little um, cups you can put in these baskets on the railings. We encourage people to kneel if they want to and pray when they receive communion. You don't have to. You don't have to take communion at all. Um, or if you want communion and you can't get up here, mobility issue or something, just let us know and we'll be happy to come to you. Um, in, in our church... This is not a Methodist table. This is not Asbury's table. It's called the Lord's table. And what that means is that God's the host and he gets to do the inviting. So whether you're a member of this church or not, whether you're a Methodist or not, whether whoever you vote for, whatever language you speak, whoever you love, uh, your levels of intellectual ability or disability, uh, none of that stuff really matters uh, because God welcomes everybody, and so we do too. Today we remember that on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. The same way when the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So in remembrance of these God's mighty acts of salvation, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving in return. Let's pray together. Holy Spirit, we ask that not only you would be present with us here today, but that you would be present in these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, that we might be for the whole world the body of Christ, redeemed by your blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ. Make that peace. One with each other. And one in ministry to all the world until you come back in final victory and we feast at your heavenly eternal banquet. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite those who are helping to serve communion to come forward.
every time we take communion, some folks will put a dollar or two on the uh, railing here for a mission. Uh, we take a, a special missions offering. This month, it's uh, campus ministry. So we have um, college ministries around Texas um, at different schools. And so today, any gifts that are left there will go to our college students. All right. The table is set and all are welcome.
be done, his kingdom come on earth as it is above. Let's sing that together one last time. That's a fun version of that song. That's so cool. Well, friends, thanks so much for worshiping with us today. I hope we get to see y'all again next Sunday. We want to let you know about a couple things going on. The youth group is having their hangout at Starbucks tonight at 4 o'clock, the one over on Fairmont. And Alexandra right here can tell you where to go and who to hang out with. Uh, she's one of our youth directors. Mark, her husband, is as well. They would love to have you. Also, on Wednesday at 11.30 this week, our Young at Heart group is having their monthly potluck lunch, and they would love to have you join along as well. We want to let you know that next Sunday at 10 o'clock in the parlor down the hall, I'll be having a next steps meeting for folks who are interested in learning more about Asbury or joining the church, and I would love to have you join me for that. Um, our youth group is also, not this Sunday, but next Sunday, going to have a kickoff meeting uh, where they're going to be talking about everything coming up in the spring and also the summer, the mission trips they'll be taking. This is a great meet and greet. There's going to be free lunch. Um, so parents and students, 6th through 12th grade, love to have you out there next Sunday. Bible Blast is starting up, not this week, but next, and this is for our third, fourth, and fifth graders, and it's a fun, like, five-week thing where they just kind of dive into scripture and learn how to study it, and uh, my kids love this. They're very excited that it's back, so we'd love to have you join for Bible Blast, not this Wednesday, but next at six o'clock. Also, we have, like, an inordinately large number of people in our church who play the ukulele, and I don't really know why, but I'm here for it. And so they're starting a group on January 28th at 2.30. If you would like to grab a ukulele and learn how to play it, they would love to have you join. And so why not? Um, that's going to be fun. It's coming up. Every year we do something called Super Bowl of Caring. The few weeks leading up to the Super Bowl, we do a canned food drive. And so if you could grab some extra food at the grocery store and bring it along and help us stock our blessing box, it's been inundated and People come every single day and grab food for the day. Um, and so if you'd like to help us with that, we'd love to have your canned food donations. Uh, folks are going to stand up here at the end of the service, and they're here to just pray for you. If you'd like to have someone pray for you today, I hope you have a great week ahead. I hope that you are starting the year with some sense of peace, that you have that peace as you go along this week. But as you go, I want you to remember that God goes before you to show you the way behind you to keep you moving, above you to watch over you, beside you to befriend you, and within you always to give you peace. peace. Amen. <laughs>